I'm Steve Miller, and this is a special edition of Future Speak. Uh, this is a segment that normally will be for our members, but while we're building our site, this uh, will be available to everybody. So glad to do this and to uh, stay in touch with uh, everybody out there who has been following my show for all of this time. So uh, great uh, stuff coming up here as we look at all of the futures markets that I follow, energy, foreign exchange, the metals, the treasury, stock indexes, and grains. So we have a lot to cover here. It's going to be uh, probably more than 30 minutes, uh, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get right to it. Uh, we're going to bring up a lot of charts as we look at something like 23 or 24 different futures contracts here in this half hour period. Let's get right to light crude. That's the first thing we're going to look at here. And uh, let me get that light crude chart coming up. There we go. And there you can see uh, the charts that I always look at. I start at the weekly chart and then come over to the daily chart uh, on some of these. So uh, let's start here. Light crude. Uh, I want to point out something that's uh, important here. You can see this uh, synchronicity of lows, and that brings downside risk. So what does that mean? Well, you see this blue gasoline highlighted here. There's a uh, final downside phase that's due for a decline right there in gasoline. Also, there's a couple of different cycles that are bottoming here that are due for declines here in light crude. That uh, also lines up with heating oil, and that says that these next few weeks are going to have some downside risk uh, in this whole energy complex. I think that's a real important thing as we look at uh, uh, this contract and also at gasoline and at heating oil. So uh, we're going to now switch over to the daily chart, and here you will see that there is um, a short-term pattern that is actually uh, very important and that has been very very consistent so first of all you could see all of these lines above these are all big resistances above the market and you could see light crude has actually had trouble here a couple of uh, uh, sell signals uh, in the candlesticks uh, evening star and dark cloud cover uh, and by the way I have a pretty extensive candlestick uh, segment uh, coming where I'm going to look at all the important candlesticks in Tools for Text, and that'll be available once the site does come up. So those candlesticks giving some pretty good signs there. Now you can see these blue cycles here. Those uh, point to the cyclical rhythm that you see on these um, uh, atop of the envelopes, essentially is what they look like at, and like look at, and these dotted lines are the projection of this one here. So you can see that what uh, I mentioned on the weekly, we're expecting a few more weeks of decline. That's really out over here. And I do think that in light crude, there is a lot of risk. You can pop up maybe one more time into this area of resistance, let's say between 60 3 and 64 in this next week but then after that it looks like risk is really starting to uh, come in so we're gonna move this over and uh, go back to the weekly chart and we'll take a look at heating uh, uh, at light at I'm sorry gasoline first and then at heating oil so here is forward slash RB coming up and here you could see that same pattern now it's moved up back towards these resistances that you could see right there but this pattern over here suggests that one more decline of a few weeks that uh, has some pretty good risk of happening so uh, gasoline is suggesting to me that even though it's really strong in here that it is going to roll over soon take a look at heating oil forward slash ho and uh, you can see it's been in this decline and there's a really great synchronicity of these lows coming where it has another few weeks also on the downside. So this does suggest to me that there is some weakness here uh, coming in this energy complex and I uh, would more look for short side trades uh, in the best one which, uh, to trade which is like crude than I would look for anything else. Again, a potential for one more little pop in there uh, in these next few days but then after that the risk is mounting in a light crude. We're going to switch over now to natural gas. 
uh, here we'll look uh, at the um, weekly and uh, the daily and here you can see it's been in this green zone we expected that this decline that it had would not last and it would start to tick up again and that's exactly what it's done so it's moving up nicely in here and you can see the inverted head and shoulders being formed now inverted head and shoulders or head and shoulders patterns are formed by cycles they don't just come out of nowhere and uh, in this case you could see that inverted head and shoulders forming it would need to get over 310 to complete that pattern here we'll take a look at the daily and I actually want to go out uh, to the um, a little longer chart in here because it aligns these cycle patterns up better so we're gonna pop out here and uh, let's just uh, grab it from this point and you'll see these nice cyclical rhythms and where we are right now was well that we're gonna likely get another uptick let's get even a closer look right over here and you can see those alignments and this is why we expected natural gas to tick up that it had moved down in through this area here and likely to give us this that's what it's done you can see the inverted head and shoulders I showed you on the weekly uh, here it is right here on the daily forming again it would need to get over the 310 number uh, in order to complete that maybe even more like 315 here looking at the daily chart so this is a pretty good look at how the cyclical patterns work in here and we're now in this rising phase and I wouldn't be surprised to see it test that area uh, over there uh, as this uh, cyclical projection uh, has been actually working pretty well so that is a look at the energy sector and basically what we're saying there is that uh, light crude and gasoline heating oil uh, they're getting into a risky period for one more move to the downside and when you get those aligned that way that could be a pretty significant move to the downside so now what we're going to do is uh, uh, switch over um, from this natural gas chart uh, and move into the dollar index so we'll move this over again we'll take a look at both the weekly and the daily we're going to go to uh, FX uh, forward slash DX and we'll get them both to load up there and there you can see so uh, we're gonna first expand the weekly uh, chart right here and what you're gonna see is that um, we're in this red zone now if you caught last week's um, special show uh, it was um, this uh, area here I said man that looked like it was an area it should move down from again and that we were likely to get some move back up in the euro currency well that did happen and it's following that pattern pretty well this eight right there is a very very important number why is it important well it, it says to me that this pattern had turned down and became negative that's why this is a red zone and it, that every rally in here should really fail for a long period of time this goes out to like September there and says uh, the dollar is in a lot of trouble now that's one of the reasons of course that I'm believing that <clears throat> that gold and silver precious metals are about to get a move on the upside I've been saying a bottom forming for a while take a look here at these beautiful patterns in here <coughs> and you can see this is that shorter term pattern turning down now we're, we're likely to get this bounce uh, a little bit of a bounce in here but then turn down again sharply in the dollar so uh, looking at that it probably means that uh, we're probably going to get well maybe a little downside in the uh, euro currency but then be moving up again if you assume that the inverse uh, correlation is going to hold up so uh, we're going to move back over here to that dollar index and now you can see this is in a red zone that should be moving down when I look at the inversely correlated euro um, here we are here this uh, euro currency is in this uh, yellow zone but moving up and it's still moving up so uh, I said to you that I thought um, pretty soon we're gonna see a move in the dollar index that's a slight rebound to the upside I want you to see how this looks here this looks like it's got one more move to the downside to me in this pattern before it gets uh, another chance to move up there so that's pretty much in alignment with what we're looking at so if we're looking for one more move to the downside in here here you could see that setting up really pretty and when we look at the daily chart that this is about a week and a half or two weeks of time 
where you're likely to get it rolling over. So we're going to look for this support area to get tested in the uh, one, we'll call it 110 to 111 uh, in the euro currency while the dollar gets some kind of a bounce. But then after that, it's likely to turn up again in some uh, significant way. Of course, we've got this Greece situation, which is likely to get solved uh, pretty soon or kicked down the road. Uh, and uh, if that happens, well, you probably get a bounce in the euro. If you have a, um, a, a Greece uh, default, uh, then you're likely to get some uh, very, very sharp, quick down move in the euro. But then I think when they start looking at it, they're going to be buying it again. So this is a look at the euro currency. We're staying in FX now. So going back to the euro, we're going to take a look at the British pound, which is next. And this is right uh, bounced nicely off of its 89-day moving average. It also was the 13-week moving average. We looked for a bounce back up in here and got it. So that looks looks pretty good. That trades with the euro a lot. So we're going to look for, uh, as we are in the euro, some pullback in here. Uh, and then maybe even more of a pullback because you can see this period of decline coming in. So what are we looking for? Maybe um, uh, this to uh, look like this and then roll over for another decline right over here. That's a look at the British pound. Japanese yen, that thing really, really fell apart. And uh, we saw it breaking down. We cautioned about that. And now it's in this red zone that doesn't end till uh, we'll call it uh, first to third week of July. So any rally here in the Japanese yen is uh, suspicious. We're going to be looking for some further decline there in the Japanese yen pretty soon. The Aussie dollar, we'll take a look at that one here. And, uh, of course, Aussie dollar is related to gold. This is important in here that the uh, Aussie, uh, which has got, you know, a huge amount of mining going on in Australia, that it held above this level right over here and is now turning up. I don't like that it got as low as it did. That is some risk. Uh, however, it seems to be saving itself here and moving away from that area. And uh, I would look for another test out over here of that. 34-week uh, moving average that's coming down. So uh, if gold does get some legs, gold and silver, then we're going to see the Aussie do a little bit better. Next thing we're going to look at is the Canadian dollar uh, forward slash uh, 6C is what we're looking at here. And uh, this a very, very similar pattern, but not as deep of a decline as we saw in the Aussie. Again, they're natural resource based also, so that makes a difference. We're going to look again for a test of that uh, area of the 34-week moving average, but then uh, probably uh, more of this kind of action after that. So uh, this looks like it could get a pretty good uptick there also in um, Canadian dollar. Uh, now, this, of course, is, uh, is related to uh, the uh, market in, um, in a light crude, and we talked about light crude earlier, uh, saying that, well, this looks like it's going to have some difficulty coming out. So uh, this area that I looked at in the Canadian dollar, I think if light crude does turn down, then that resistance is going to be pretty important for the Canadian dollar, and we're going to look for it not to be able to get that far. So we just actually talked a lot about gold and silver, and uh, we want to now uh, take a look at the gold and silver market, platinum uh, also, and uh, then uh, we will see that this is really an important area in here. I, I think that it's been extending out a bottoming process in here. Now, it's been going on for um, some three months where it's been trading uh, in relatively narrow range of uh, the uh, around 1140 uh, up to about 1230, so $90 range for three months. And I think it's all been part of a big bottoming process. Uh, there was a low that's been due uh, over the last, we'll call it, three to four weeks, and it has not really been able to get a footing yet, but it hasn't done any damage yet either. If it got under 1140, I would be a little bit cautious. So here is that weekly chart in gold, and uh, I think that what you see here is that uh, this uh, holding up above this important, we'll call it 1141 area, is good. It looks like 
it might be ready to put that bottom in. It hasn't quite gotten a, a significant upturn yet. Of course, it's going to have to get above this level right over here uh, in the 11, uh, 1230s in order to really be convincing in any way that that bottom or bottoming process or base building has completed. This would all then be a base if it did that. And even getting above that trend line would be some good sign that uh, it had turned up. So that's really an important area. Uh, when we look over at the daily chart, uh, I've got this set on uh, two years because I want you to see the beautiful big cycle that's in there. And right, you can see right over here, the cycle is supposed to be ending. Now, uh, it looks to me like it's extending out in here because it hadn't had a breakdown. Let's just look at these last two cycles right here. And uh, this uh, low that was due right here, well, you see, it kind of equaled it in here. And now we're getting, let's take even a closer look here, to where it, uh, it looks like it's turning up in these patterns. There's two, there's a bigger and smaller cycle right in here. This one turning up, this one turning up, and you can see gold here turning up also. Those are the important resistance areas in gold. Uh, the first one being uh, where it uh, has not been able to move through today, we'll call 1189, a bigger one right over here at 1197 and then 1205. So those are the important resistances. This is the 89 a day moving average coming down that's uh, also lining up at that 1197 area. So that's a pretty er important area to look for uh, a test. So uh, back to the weekly chart, you can see there's that big base forming. And uh, here is the silver market. And you can see, well, almost an identical pattern. Uh, a little bit better uh, as it did not threaten these lows. Uh, and the uh, where gold did threaten that last low right over there, silver is a little bit stronger. Uh, again, this looks to me like it could turn up. Uh, pretty significantly here soon. And again, it's going to have to get above 1780 to uh, be convincing that it has moved into a strong positive pattern. This is the big cycle that is looks like it turned up and likely to give us a big rally later in the year. I've been saying that the, the gold silver story is a second half story and uh, this is uh, we're getting to the time where it should be able to move up strongly. If silver moves under that 1526 area that's going to be an important negative occurrence. It's still 70 cents from there. That's a long way. So, so far it looks pretty safe and uh, the pattern looks to me like it's getting ready to move up. If I look here at the daily pattern, you can see, look at the support that it just got below and look at these two timing spikes right there. Uh, that's where we were looking timing wise for a low to form and it's really trying to do it. There's two inverted hammers right there that uh, are giving some sign that buying is starting to come in. So there is some sign that that area that we were looking for a bottom is actually happening. So back to the weekly pattern and we're going to put up platinum so you can get a look at that and you can see that platinum has got a much more negative pattern. It actually did have uh, a breakdown when it got under this level right here and it's been in trouble ever since. Now here's that big pattern that we're looking at in gold and silver. This is due for an upturn in here. So resistance at 1185 right now, that would be the area that I would expect that if we got legs in gold and silver that this would join and get up to that area. Copper, a very, very different story uh, in copper. Uh, where it um, has uh, gotten into what I think is an important bottoming area. Uh, here you could see up those two uh, spikes coming down. This is the timing that I expected the low to occur, uh, which was in the beginning to middle period of June. So here we are in this corrective period right here. These Both of these cycles are going to turn up pretty soon. I think copper is going to fly over $3 after that. Uh, so we're just going to look for some sign of bottoming there in copper. And uh, I don't think that we really have a lot of it yet. We've got maybe a little bit of buying coming in. Let's look at the support area right here. And you could see it got into that green zone and uh, now uh, has started to move up. There is a little bit of short term risk in here at the moment. We want to see how this bottom forms uh, as there is a um, 
a little bit more of a potential decline right in here you can see that area then after that we start to move up you can uh, draw a trend line uh, of this decline right kind of across uh, well that's not quite it so uh, but something like that and that will give you some sense about potential breakout when that happens you might want to put that up on a two hour chart uh, to get a little more clarity about that so uh, that is a look at uh, copper so we looked at the energies foreign exchange and metals so far just want to uh, tell people that are watching this uh, for the first time or that uh, may be waiting for the new site to come and open up uh, we are really working hard to get that site up the plan is uh, that uh, all of the uh, favorite segments are going to be uh, in the membership uh, site. Uh, it's uh, membership aspect of the site. Uh, it's going to be uh, really very, very affordable. And uh, you'll be getting uh, the tools for text and trader psychology and this segment, Future Speak, uh, there and m more that's going to be put in that, in that first level uh, of um, the um, site. Uh, also, there are other levels which are going to be trader support and all of my charts that you're looking at, you'll be able to get on your TOS platform. Uh, and uh, that is, I think, going to be great for a lot of people that have really wanted to have that for a long time. As a matter of fact, if you subscribe uh, for three months on the charts, you're going to get my MCI, the Market Condition Indicator. And I think that uh, that is a very, very valuable tool, and uh, you'll like that. The charts are going to be updated every single week, so you'll get uh, fresh charts uh, and fresh analysis uh, in case things change, which they often do every uh, single week. You can go to uh, the Coming Soon page at AskSlim.com, and that will allow you to sign up. All you're signing up for there is to be notified that uh, the, when the launch does happen and so far we're looking like we're still uh, in the area of about three weeks away from that I'm pushing them to get it a little bit faster but uh, I think that uh, that's about what the timing is going to be and then uh, once the site is up there's going to be a free show for everybody on Fridays that's going to have lots of good stuff in there some of my analysis a look at the last week uh, and of course the very very popular short-term view of the coming week is going to be in that uh, show. That's the only real show I'm going to do, uh, and uh, the rest of them are just going to be uh, segments uh, that are in the uh, membership area. <clears throat> so that's my uh, little promo for this segment. Uh, and uh, if you want to write me, you can write me at slim at askslim.com. All right, let's get back into the uh, analysis of uh, futures here we're going to get back to the charts uh, the last thing that we looked at was the metals we're going to jump into the treasuries I want to look at the short-term uh, treasury market first because there's a lot of information here uh, as far as in, in the uh, five year we don't look at that one uh, all of the time but we're going to look at it now because um, that one uh, has had a pretty significant uh, breakdown in this uh, last week. It's a real important pattern that we see going on here. So let's uh, switch over now to the charts and look here at the five year treasury note. So a uh, lot of lines on here and I'm going to help you uh, understand uh, what these lines mean. Um, there are uh, three cycle brackets that you can see on the bottom and they designate uh, the important rhythms in the market. Now, um, if, if you look at the um, biggest one right over here, when it nests and has three cycles pushing down with it, that's a period where uh, there's a lot of risk. Now, uh, I mentioned that about oil, didn't I? That there were some synchronicity of cycles even in oil uh, and also in gasoline and heating oil, the products. So we're entering into a period where that could be pretty good downside risk in oil. So I wanted to make that comparison when I got to this chart. So uh, here's another area where all three were nested on the downside and that brought, you can see that pretty good decline. Now, uh, what we have right now is this period here. This is where we turned up pretty significantly there. That was after that nesting. And you had three cycles that were pushing up. One, two, three. And it got you a big rally. 
when it rolled over, in other words, this smaller pattern pushing down, it broke this low. Now I'm giving you some advanced cycle lessons in here that will be available in my coming cycle workshop. And if this little cycle uh, was uh, had all that much pressure on it on the downside, it means that the intermediate and longer term cycle had no ability to withstand that. And it says that there is a very negative situation going on in here. The internals and in the longer terms are very, very weak and that allowed this big downside push to take out that last low at around 118.08, that is a bad sign. So now if we use these patterns, the smaller ones, it shows us that a rally is due in here, right there. And I bought a little bit today, actually, uh, in the treasury market, uh, just in advance, just a taste. And uh, so I'm looking for a potential rebound starting in the next week or so and getting a pretty good rebound, but then you can see then these will be rolling over again and then another big decline coming. So I'm only looking for a matter of, you know, two, three week rally in here before it rolls over again. We don't really know whether that rally started yet uh, and uh, we'll, t we'll take a look at, at the um, 10 year in order to get a little bit of a sense. So this is a very, very bad breakdown and a very, very bad message that the short term part of the market is now starting to discount Fed actions or uh, economic actions or uh, dollar weakness that would force uh, Euro Europeans and other people that have been in this market to exit this market. So there's a lot of reasons that we could get interest rates moving up sharply, and they have been moving up very, very sharply. Let's take a look here at the 10-year, and you can see here's that major breakdown that actually uh, happened um, two weeks ago, and uh, now uh, this uh, cycle alignment is a little bit, let me uh, move this out to 10-year so that you can see the way these align properly. We're gonna go to 10-year weekly and uh, bring it in again. And there is that proper alignment in the cycles where uh, you got nesting. There's a glitch here in the uh, TOS uh, platform when uh, if you have uh, big longer cycle patterns in there and you're on a shorter term, uh, like these are set in 10 years and uh, in the two year, they don't line up properly when you go into the two years. So I have to go back out to 10 year to make it look right. Uh, so the, for those of you that will be subscribing to my charting, that's an important thing to realize. Here's your breakdown under here. This is that smaller cycle we talked about on the 10-year, on the 5-year, uh, and uh, getting to this area here where the bounce should come. Now, usually the counter trend area would be a resistance area where it broke down from. We'll call it 126. So that looks like uh, the first area of resistance when we hear on, when we look on the weekly for uh, the bounce that I think is likely to come here in the 10 years. So now I want to switch over to the um, daily chart and uh, you can see the cycle alignment in here. Also, take a look at that uh, big head and shoulders that formed in here and there was also a small head and shoulders on the right shoulder. So here's your left shoulder and your head and this is the uh, cycle pushing down that formed the head. The cycle that's rising forms the right shoulder, but it's so weak it can't get to a new high, so this cycle turns down faster and gives you the head and shoulders breakdown, which we have right in here right now. Uh, so uh, big, big uh, major top in the 10-year when we look at that. Now, uh, when we look at the shorter term pattern, this is really the key. And the reason I started to nibble on the long side, we saw that weekly pattern looking like it's due to turn up. So here you could see in the next, we'll call it two, four, two to four days, is when we're due to get into this upturn. Now, here's your resistance zone. Uh, in here that I put in for the next rally when we get this bounce and it's only a bounce and a big decline and you can see the resistance comes in between 126.06 and 126.18 so uh, that's the area in the next few days that we're going to expect a bounce to start in the 10 year and uh, I think that uh, is going to be a um, bounce that 
uh, if you're nibbling on it like I did for the uh, short term, that once it gets into that area, you got to take profits. And I say once like it's a given. Of course, nothing is ever a given, uh, but I think it's a high probability. And when I look at these cyclical patterns, uh, it's just me analyzing them, and everything is about probability. And there's a probability I'm going to be wrong also. But in this case, I think it's a high probability that we're going to get some kind of a bounce in there that is meaningful. So uh, that is a look at the 10-year. Um, I'm going to go to the 30-year, and I'm going to stay here. On, I'm noticing that they're bouncing already today. And uh, we're going to look here, and there's that same pattern on the 30-year. We'll call it two, three days in here to a bottom potentially, and then getting a rally in there also. Now, I don't put up the weekly on this one. I don't look at it much because uh, it, when, when this uh, contract was redefined, it then uh, had a, um, a change in the way it looks, and it messed up the charts a lot. The daily charts have been corrected, not the weekly charts. So I really only look at the daily in the 30-year bond. So that is uh, a look at the uh, Treasury market. Uh, we're going to move now from the uh, Treasuries over to the stock indexes. So we're going to uh, look at the uh, SPX and uh, the um, uh, NASDAQ and the RUT. Now the uh, S&P, um, uh, there was a short-term uh, breakdown in, in the SPX that tipped uh, a, a bounce, uh, the tip the, the breakdown, and uh, let's look at the weekly first before we get over there. Uh, I want to look at these uh, bigger patterns that are aligning. Now, uh, you can see this big pattern coming down in here, and this big uh, break, that was about, about a 10% uh, break uh, in the NASDAQ, it didn't co close at 10%. But this is a new alignment that I'm uh, looking at in here that is different than my original long-term uh, look at the market. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be, uh, once the site is up, I'll be doing some big picture analysis of the market. And based on this pattern right over here, this, uh, I'm just going to give you a little tip off. This goes uh, out, uh, out into March of 2016. That's uh, likely to be an important low. So there's an important top that's going to form here in the second half of this year and an important low that's due out uh, in March of 2016. That's just a little teaser and we'll be talking a lot uh, about that. Now we had, you can see we had this kind of wedge pattern forming in here as it's gotten into these resistance areas and then we had the breakdown of that and got down right down to touch this important 34 week moving average. It did that yesterday and of course we have this blast off today now these are important counts in here that's 13 that's 17. Um, the, the, there's not a good likelihood that this uh, is going to be a low here at 17 they usually don't go that long it's more like, likely that we're going to get a uh, roll over again and move out into this area over here uh, when i switch over in a minute to the nasdaq there's a better look at that alignment uh, and the Russell is much, much uh, stronger and a different pattern. So here is the um, uh, look at the S&P 500 uh, cash on the daily chart. Now, all of these lows in here, uh, the 12, 11 day, 12 day, 12 day, look at that consistency on these smaller cycles. Um, this 10 came early, and I got to tell you, that fooled me. I thought there were going to be a couple more days on the downside. It moved up into this important resistance area, and uh, the uh, uh, Russell has got a short term pattern that suggests another move on the downside. That's that big blue cycle pattern there. So I think that this, which uh, uh, when you get declining markets like this and these big up days, they're usually failures that happen after that. You know, a couple days they manage to stay up, but then they roll over again. I'm going to look for about, uh, we'll call it 11 to 13 days from now, another low. So we're going to look for a rolling over and a pretty big hit again. I don't think that this rally we're in today is going to be anything that can hold up uh, in here. So uh, I want to switch over to the NASDAQ because I want to show you this NASDAQ weekly pattern. Here's that S&P 500 and uh, we're going to change this over to NDX. And this has got a very, very consistent 13-week um, pattern that has showed up in here. Uh, we'll call it 11 to 13 weeks. You can see it rolling uh, 
uh, made the low here. This is only the ninth week, and that is an incomplete pattern. So that says to me that we're likely to get another leg on the downside of uh, a few weeks in here. And that aligns with what I just showed you in the S&P 500, that it looks uh, incomplete to me and that this rally is likely to fail. So that is the uh, NASDAQ when we look at that. That looks pretty incomplete to me uh, and uh, likely to get another leg in the downside. Now let's take a look at the daily and here you can see that same NASDAQ pattern uh, as uh, it made that 10 day low. Uh, now gets up into this uh, resistance area. We're going to look for this to roll over um, pretty good uh, uh, pretty soon and give us another move to the downside in the NASDAQ uh, there. So uh, this to me looks like a pattern that has got um, some risk to it again uh, when we look at that. Now we'll take a look at the Russell RUT. This is much, much stronger. And you know, it's interesting when you look here at the Russell, so many uh, people, so, so much you read talk about the huge overvaluation of the Russell. First of all, the Russell's in a different pattern. It's in this green zone here and moving up. There's some, this looks completed to me. Uh, and what, what this says to me is that um, oh, uh, if you look at the PEs of the Russell, there was some anomalies in there that made the PE look really, really high um, in the last couple of years, and that seems to be sorting out now. The projected PE is not that high at all. Uh, so uh, I think that even though this is an area of resistance right in here, we'll call it up 1274 to 1278, um, this, uh, this pattern looks definitely better to me in the market. Um, one more... Uh, thing that I want to say about these uh, markets here uh, as far as the stock market goes we're getting some really really good strength in the financials and the financial pattern when I look at the XLF is very very strong it had the uh, we went entered into a time that it should have had a correction and it just moved sideways now we have things like Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs and uh, some of those stocks uh, in the banks moving up very very strongly that speaks pretty well and it says to me that this topping action that I think that we've been in for quite a while I don't think it's going to be over yet uh, I think that uh, once we get this um, next couple of weeks where I think there's risk of another move to the downside we're likely to get another buying wave in the stock market that uh, is um, probably going to be uh, a an opportunity uh, to do some better selling but probably take us to some n n slight new high area again as we keep seeming to want to edge out to a new high so those financials are speaking to the fact that you know I th though I think we have another full pullback coming I don't think that we're in the big break or that the top is quite complete when I look at that so I thought that was an important aspect to uh, bring up. Um, one other thing that uh, I want to do is I want to bring the ASLIM market condition indicator up here uh, because that <clears throat> that's something that uh, a lot of people like to look at uh, that I have uh, shown actually many times uh, in the past. What the what this indicator is is uh, a uh, indicator that gives the condition of the market. That's why I call it the MCI. And uh, we, it's really interesting in here that we've had this decline and the Dow Jones, which is of course made up of the uh, biggest stocks out there, um, that uh, has given some pretty bad warnings in here. So uh, here is the uh, Eslin market condition indicator. And uh, you, when you look here, you can look at four different indexes, uh, the uh, Spider, the Russell, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. And uh, we have gotten into the swing zone. This is plus 25 and minus 25. And that uh, doesn't mean a lot other than the fact that where it moves next. So if it moves down through it, like actually the Dow did, and you see this turned red, uh, that's a bad sign. And now the Dow is getting back up into it. Uh, and once it, uh, if it rolls down under again, that's going to be a pretty bad sign. So uh, here you could see actually how the Russell 
is absolutely the strongest. And this is a confirmation to me that the internals of the Russell are very, very strong and uh, likely to see a test of those highs sooner rather than later. So uh, I just wanted you to see this uh, MCI uh, market condition indicator again uh, that will be uh, available um, with a three month uh, subscription to the Slim cycle charts. So I uh, wanted to share that with you. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do here is uh, move over uh, and look at the grains. Uh, grains are something that I've added in this discussion. Uh, and uh, we're basically going to look uh, at uh, corn, wheat, uh, the um, uh, corn, wheat, and uh, uh, soybeans, and uh, the oats market. So uh, I'm going to switch over here and uh, I still have the rut up there, so let's uh, move over to the corn market. The first thing we're going to look at is uh, ZC, and I want to look at the daily chart on here also. Uh, so let's, uh, this is corn futures, and here, this is an important area of bottoming in here. Now, the last week was a bullish engulfing pattern, and that came right in between these two areas where a low should be coming. That's a bullish sign, and corn looks to me like it's getting, getting ready to move uh, on the upside. Uh, take a look at the daily chart, and uh, here you can see it tried to get up through here. The momentum, which has been negative, and this is the uh, slim ribbons, um, this uh, momentum has been negative all the way through here. You can see that. This is the first day that the momentum has actually, right in here, turned gray. And what that says is that this downside momentum is ending. You can see an inverted head and shoulders trying to form in here. So maybe you get something like this and then an upside move there. Uh, you can see that uh, the neckline then would be um, something like this. And you'd need to move uh, above that neckline after this shoulder is uh, uh, confirmed uh, that it's moving up. So corn is looking uh, pretty nice to me when you look at, at that. Uh, look, as far as the bottom goes, as far as the intermediate pattern goes, it's not all that great uh, because we had a lower low in this cyclical pattern. Next thing we're going to look at is wheat. Uh, and uh, let's bring this uh, into the two-year look here. Uh, to your weekly and you could see the wheat bottom was due in the same place last week also had a bullish engulfing pattern so that is uh, a good sign there when we did this last week we thought there was a bottoming coming in here uh, the next thing we're going to look at is soybeans uh, and uh, there's the bottoming area and no sign yet now this has the colored phasing in there uh, so we're, that red uh, signals what I said in corn also, that it was kind of a negative intermediate pattern. Uh, soybeans, no real sign in there at all that, it's, that they're getting ready to move up. And uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is the oat market. Uh, it's forward slash ZO. And uh, this one probably uh, one of the best patterns of all. That's where the low was due. It started to move up, moved up through the 13-week moving average. And uh, that is a pretty good sign. So uh, that is uh, a look at the uh, grain market. So uh, that is going to wrap it up. That was future speak uh, as we look at the um, all of the six different areas of uh, the um, uh, charts, 23 different uh, uh, contracts that we looked at there. Lots of information. So uh, don't forget, uh, go to the Coming Soon page uh, if you want to be notified when the uh, new site is going to come up. Uh, and uh, you can send me emails, any questions you have about anything that I uh, talked about uh, in uh, the um, any of these charts or any other questions that, that you have about trading, technical or psychological aspects of trading, uh, you can send those to slim at asslim.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share this. Uh, make sure you comment. And uh, looking forward to uh, having you as members on the new site. So uh, I will see you pretty soon. We'll be doing this again next week. So uh, great trading to all of you.